Hello everyone, I'm Molly here with Rose City RV and today we're going to take a look at the all new Impression 235RW. Is this the correct model for you, you may ask? Here are five key specifications to help you decide. This model can sleep up to two people, has a weight of 7,523 pounds, has an overall length of 28 feet 11 inches and a height of 13 feet 2 inches, features one slide out, so let's take a look inside. Okay, let's check out the rear kitchen, as this is what the floor plan features in this unit. I love how small this fifth wheel is. Um, but really has a lot of usable space, a lot of floor space, and the ceiling height definitely makes it feel bigger in here, along with these huge picture windows, as you see here. Um, and then also in the slide, we have a large window, and then in the, sli the side. So let's all that natural light in, make it feel big in here, um, while also being under 30 feet overall, or 31 feet overall. And then you're gonna have that overhang over your truck. Um, roughly three to four feet. So really this is a pretty short fifth wheel, really user friendly for those smaller campsites. One thing I like about this model in particularly is how they eliminated the dinette seating inside, um, especially in a smaller fifth wheel because that is just not space typically people use. Most of the time being spent is outside. So why waste the space in here? You can use it for something else. But they do give you these cool little bar stools at countertop height that allows you to look right out the window right at your campsite. So if you are forced to eat inside the rain or whatever that may be, you can still see outside. And then again, with the big windows, it feels um, extra large in here. So do have an inside seating option, but not losing all that interior space to a whole dinette setup. So that's a cool thing. Plus you get this counter space when you are cooking um, back here. So that's nice too, or you can use it as a buffet, whatever you wanna do there. Moving on here, we have some storage underneath here. You're gonna have three drawers, which is nice silverware utensil drawers. We've got some storage underneath of the sink, and I like how they left that completely open, good for garbage um, or larger items, which I like. Now, this is that new fancy sink. You're gonna start seeing this in a lot of different product. We saw it down there at the expo in Indiana in a ton of different stuff. Um, so that kind of takes the wow factor away because so many people are offering it. But it really is a cool feature. Um, <clears throat> having this cup uh, washer here, you just push down on that. I'm not gonna do that because there's antifreeze in there now. Got the sprayer here, we've got waterfall here, we've got soap dispenser, and then of course our dial for our faucet. So. Also, one thing that I like about this that you don't really notice or think about, in these big farmhouse style sinks, I mean, this thing is huge. If it were to be empty right now, you'd be able to see how big it is, but they include these pans with it, which is not something you think about, but if you only need to wash a dish or two, you don't wanna waste your water if you're camping without water, that gives you that option. So you don't have to fill up this huge sink just to wash a few dishes, you can just, use one of these nice little pans to do so. And then this is kind of like a strainer too. You can throw your vegetables, whatever, right in there and, and rinse them right and in the sink as a part of the sink. So that's cool. You can slide those, take them in, take them out, whatever you na may need there. Over here we have our oven and then our storage drawer underneath, which is a cool feature. Nice magnet, nice and sturdy because a lot of people fill these with heavy weight items. And then obviously these buttons illuminate there. And then we have our flip up uh, glass top, which they've been doing for four or five years. Most of you are familiar with that. One thing that's new with the oven, I think I mentioned it a few other times, but these have um, a new safety feature, which I like. If you accidentally bump that and turn it on, it will not ignite this unless you hold that down and heat up that coupler that thermal couple so there's been multiple times i've been in the unit and man it smells like propane you go over here and somebody had bumped into that and left it on on accident now you don't have to worry about that so that's kind of cool our light and our fan over our range here microwave really works like a regular microwave 10 cubic foot 12 volt refrigerator so nice and big lots of space there which we like then we have theater seating. Obviously this flips down as we have it that way, cup holder, or you can have it in the up position if you wanted to lay across. Also reclining on both sides. 
Moving over to our entertainment here, fireplace, which is always a nice feature. We have um, two Bluetooth compatible speakers, so you can link these together, have one inside, outside, both outside, whatever you may need. You can link up to 10 of those. I personally think that's a really cool option. Some storage under here, under the TV here. And then behind that, we have hidden storage. Just a nice use of space there, which I really like with some um, hooks there for clothes hanging, closet hanging, whatever you need to do. A lot of RVs don't have a spot to put your shoes or your coat, so that makes that really nice. Or, um, again, if you want to use that as pantry space, you can. So, oh, one thing I missed over top of the kitchen here, there's overhead um, cabinetry there. But one thing I like, I'm only 5'6", I can reach this pretty easily. Um, that is one complaint you will hear in fifth wheels is the cabinets are way too high in the air and they're not usable. But I feel these ones are, um, like I said, I'm not super tall and I, I can still reach that pretty good. Okay, moving over here, this is our on-demand water heater function. Um, if this was powered up and on, this would be illuminated. You'd be able to see that. Um, we are going to make a video for that if you're curious. We just have not done that yet. That'll tell you the temperature, which you can adjust right here, and it'll tell you the flow rate and all that other fun stuff. Our monitor panels here give us, gives us our awning and our slide out control right in one spot, along with our main interior light switches, our water pump, our water heater, and then our um, tank heater. So this is gonna give you a power switch, um, a master power switch for that. Not really necessary, but it is there. And then our tank monitoring system, which is located right there. One thing to keep in mind, I'm not sure on this one, I'm sure it does have two gray tanks being a rear kitchen, but they use these monitor panels generically across a ton of brands and floor plans, so they don't always have what's listed on here, so that's one thing to keep in mind if you are shopping. Um, ask how many tanks it has so you get the right answer per that model. Oh, and it actually it says that now. It never used to say that before. Tanks may vary by model. Then underneath of here, we have our converter, so all our fuses and our breakers are going to be located right there. 110 outlet there. Open stairs. I like how this looks. Um, the furnace is actually hiding behind there, I think. Um, it's either there or in the back, so don't quote me on that. But I like the way that this looks open here. It just kind of gives you a more open feel. Then going into the bathroom, we have a decent sized shower in here. So I'm standing in here now. I can move my arms comfortably. Um, they do put a skylight in here, so if you are a, a six foot tall guy, um, your head should be able to fit up in there, which we like too. And then the nice door, no sliding doors on this one. Um, this is more of a um, budget friendly model. So this is just one of those options that keep it um, less expensive versus the glass. I personally like this option because you're not squeegeeing glass every time you take a shower. Then um, above the toilet here, some more towel hangers, which nobody really does this. So I like that they have those already on there and ready. Um, big question is where can I screw into the wall and nobody likes doing that because you just never know what you're going to come up with. And they also put a little detail on here, added a couple um, pieces of wood to just make it feel more homey. And then we have our sink here, pretty plain and simple. Some storage underneath, storage in here. And our GFI outlet is located right here. And then our light switch is located directly above that. Now, moving into the bedroom area, we have our VersaTilt bed, which is super nice in these smaller floor plans. Um, again, if you remember, this is only 30 feet, I think 11 inches, right around 31 feet. So this just really makes this bedroom usable. You can change in here comfortably. You don't have to use the bathroom or if somebody's in the bathroom, you can do that. Nice thing, small as a small fifth wheel, you don't really see washer dryer prep, which a lot of times is not necessary for people, but at least you get this nice closet. If you're not using it for washer dryer, um, which most people don't, you've at least got this nice big closet space here. These shelves are removable. They come right out super easy. So you can use that as nice usable space. 
And then next to the bed here, we have some hang space located in here. And they also give you this nice um, fold up rack. So if you want to use that instead of hanging clothes, um, that's just another thing that's included. It's just the small things, but in my opinion, that's really nice. And then underneath of there, we have our um, wicker baskets that they give you. Again, just another spot for usable space. So let's go take a look outside. Okay, so outside, um, one of the biggest things that people probably don't realize, um, unless you've owned multiple fifth wheels or had them for any length of time, is exterior materials. There's a lot of variation in this sidewall construction, um, and that variation doesn't seem like a big deal when you're purchasing, but 10 years down the road or even five years down the road is a huge difference in the way that this material will look. Um, this is Asdell high gloss vacuum bonded. So it's super shiny. You see this, how shiny it is? It doesn't get near as chalky as the other and, and, and it doesn't get d lamb just from being um, straight up. This is all, like I said, vacuum bonded construction. So this is with a very expensive machine, but basically they build this whole wall as one and put it on as one. It just makes a lot less issues with DLAM um, and a lot just less issues with the chalkiness. And again, if it doesn't have a leak, you still will not get DLAM like you will on those other ones just because the wall will sag in time. You do not get that with this. So I really love that they're doing this high gloss Asdell vacuum bonded wall on this budget friendly product. So that's my my thing about the exterior of these. They just really didn't cheapen out on the materials, which again in that five to ten year mark, that's really important. Now we have a almost full length awning, really technically full length because you can't go any farther with the cab over there. So that campsite side, you're going to be able to use. Um, the whole thing with your awning which i like there's also that led which you see on most new things you got the led light strip underneath so nothing too fancy there this also does have the electric ground control level up that we like the 3.0 um, so you do just push that button and you're leveled up it's not going to be the hydraulic but it is the electric also, this is a glass door. Um, this is a heavier duty door, as you notice, if you were here. The, the opening and the closing of this is just a whole lot better. Also, this is a 30 inch door, another thing that you won't really notice unless you're here. So it allows you to have that wide step going in and coming out, which again is not something you would really notice if you're not an avid, ca avid camper or haven't owned one. Those 26 inch doors is what you see a lot of times on that lower budget friendly stuff. Um, so I really like that they have this 30 inch door. And then we have aluminum uh, rims here. These are Maxxis tires, um, really high rated. We haven't seen them a lot yet. They had Goodyear on everything. And a lot of brands you'll see are kind of moving away from that and using these Maxxis tires. They're raving about them. I am not raving about them yet because I don't have any experience with that. But that's just a fact on what they are. Then we have a 110 outlet located here and our cable coax hookup located here. So if you want to put that outside TV on, um, you can if that's something you're interested in. Then we have our pastor storage located right here. This just goes to the other side. Um, this is what you would consider a little bit smaller storage for a fifth wheel, but this is a much smaller fifth wheel. So that those kind of go hand in hand when you go to those 30 foot fifth, fifth wheels. You just can't make space under here that you don't have. There's another little speaker bracket right here. So those um, speakers I showed you inside that you can pair, you could add another one or move one of those to out here and have a little bracket for it. Then we have a bottle opener there just nice little option our solar controller is right here our battery disconnect is right here and then we have a little light that illuminates the storage area so you can see and then a light switch here light switch here is for the front docking lights you can't see but we will show you there and then that's going to be it for the storage it's got a door on the other side which we will show you as well moving around the front Here's the docking lights I was referring to. That's where the switch is for that. Then underneath of here, this is our battery vent, so nothing that you need to know there, but our solar on the side option. So again, this does have solar on the roof already equipped. 
Um, but the solar on the side option allows you to add a backpack or a suitcase panel, um, whatever you may call them, that you can be mobile with. You can move that into the sun if you need to. And then um, just one thing to remember about that is that if you get one of those, it has to have the solar controller built in. This is wired straight to the battery, does not go through the solar controller. I hope one day they figure that out and get that done. Um, but as for now, you still have to have the controller with the panel if you go the mobile option. This is a Lippert Rhino box. Um, this is just a regular pin box, nothing you really need to know there. Our propane storage is on this side. You're gonna get two 20 pounders there. I like the 20 pounder option, just makes maneuvering them easier, especially for elderly people. And then our docking station here. So I like this winterization port right outside. Then we have our um, pump hose valve. That's what this is to uh, draw from the freshwater tank or from this city water connection. So if your campsite has a water hookup, you can hook up straight to there and use a water pressure from the hose. Our fresh water connection, if you want to fill the onboard tank inside the coach, you just hook your hose right up to that. And then up here we have our black tank flush. So that's going to be for spraying out your black tank flush. It's got these little sprayers in there, sprays at a high pressure rate, just kind of helps break up that tissue and make your, your sensors read properly on the monitor panel. Little docking light here so you can see what you're doing if you're setting up at night. And then satellite cable hookups are all right there. Our 3.0 electric level up is right here. So that's where you're gonna hit that all auto level button when you get to the campsite. And then they include these now on pretty much everything, which I like. Um, this stops people from forgetting on site. A lot of times after we do the demo, and go over what the process is with auto level. By the time they leave here, they forget. So when they get home or when you get home with your new purchase, you've got that quick reference there to remind you how to do that. And then we have our 50 amp hookup located there. This is pre-wired for two air conditioners. I believe this model only has one. And then we have a 60,000 BTU water heater right here. This is again on demand. I showed you the control inside for that. It's not lit up like I mentioned before. Um, so you can't really see it work currently, um, but that's what this is on the outside. And if you look in there, that's what it looks like there. Now underneath up here, we have our three inch sewer hookups. So you're gonna have your gray tank located right here for the shower. And then you're going to have a black tank valve. It's hiding right up here. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, this has a completely enclosed and heated underbelly. So that's why those are on extensions and sticking out so that way if you're heating that, you're not losing that heat. And also it keeps your gate valves up underneath of there in the heat. So that way that um, wastewater is not freezing on top of the valve and not allowing you to open it when it does come time to um, drain those if you are cold weather camping. Now, the other side of this is gonna be an additional gray valve or a galley tank, whatever you wanna call it. That's gonna be for the kitchen, designated strictly for the kitchen. So that's nice, you get two tanks, gray water is what everybody seems to run out of. Now on the back, we have our standard RV ladder. That's a microwave or range exhaust there. Everybody always asks about this. This is a um, waterless P-trap. So this is where it gets air for that. Um, now we have our tow package on this as well. So this is gonna be rated, like the sticker says there, 3,000 pound towing rating. And then you're also already pre-wired with the four-way flat. So if you're towing a motorcycle trailer or side-by-side -side trailer, whatever you got going on, golf cart, you can plug right into that. It's plug and play, ready to go. Our furnace exhaust right here. So don't put anything in front of that if the furnace is on. License plate bracket located there. Up top, we have our uh, pre-wired observation camera. So that's gonna be, again, if you're pulling a trailer, whether it be an open trailer or a closed trailer, you can see what's happening back here, bike rack, whatever you need. 
Um, if you purchase the camera, the four little screws come off there, it pops right in there and you get a screen for your vehicle and you can see what's happening behind you. Even if you're not towing a trailer and you're just one of those people that wants to know if somebody's tailgating you, that will allow you to see behind you even when you are driving. It's not just a backup camera, it is for observation. So. All right, coming back around to the front, that's gonna do it for the 235 video. If you've got questions, please just let us know. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more RV videos like this.